the American dream may not be all it's cracked up to be. I'll tell you more in just a moment. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we are going through the Bible in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you to subscribe to our channel, click the bell for notifications, so that you can go with us through the Word of God. We'll read just a little bit of the Scripture every day and pull one thing out of it that will help us be more and more like Jesus. Well, right now we're in the book of Ecclesiastes, and we're looking at Solomon, and it's going back and forth between talking about what life is like without God and what life is like with God, and we kind of see this back and forth uh, about those things. And so uh, in looking at that, uh, chapter 4, we get into Ecclesiastes 4, starts talking about different things of observations that Solomon is having concerning life and concerning our condition. And he pulls out some uh, very interesting truths that we could learn from. We're going to pull one of those things out today as we read this section of Scripture together. So if you will with me, let's read chapter 4 of Ecclesiastes. Again, I looked and I saw all the oppression that was taking place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed, and they have no comforter. Power was on the side of their oppressors, and they have no comforter. And I declared that the dead who had already died are happier than the living who are still alive. But better than both is one who's never been born, who has not seen the evil that is done under the sun. And I saw all toil and all achievement spring from one person's envy of another. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Fools fold their hands and ruins them, ruin themselves. Better one handful with tranquility than two hands full with toil and chasing after the wind. Again, I saw something meaningless under the sun. There was a man all alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked, and why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless, a miserable business. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one of them can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not, easily, is not quickly broken. Better a poor but wise youth than an old but foolish king who no longer knows how to heed a warning. The youth may have come from prison to the kingship, or he may, may have been born in poverty within his kingdom. I saw that all who lived and walked under the sun followed the youth, the king's successor. There was no end to all the people who were born before them. But those who came later were not pleased with the successor. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. And so in this passage of scripture, we see that Solomon brings up three things, uh, three different sections of things. One is the idea of oppression. The other is the idea uh, of toiling for things, of getting an abundance of things and not enjoying them. And the final one was talking about the successor to the king and how people were not satisfied with the king, but, but followed the successor. And then when the successor came to power, they weren't happy with him either. And this was a chasing after the wind. Uh, of all these things, we're going to take a look at that middle one, that, that idea of toil and achievement, the idea that, you know, having uh, better to have one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil, or having somebody who just toils and works all the time, but never really gets to enjoy the, the fruits of his labor. And Solomon calls this a miserable business. And I would agree. And I, I think that to a certain extent, the American dream is kind of built on this idea that we can do everything. We can have it all. But the sacrifice oftentimes for having it all costs us uh, the, very th the very enjoyment God wants us to get from our labor and work. Sometimes it's the enjoyment of our children or the enjoyment of just having a job and, and being able to let go and en enjoy the things that God has, has given us to enjoy. 
There was a great song many years ago by Casting Crowns called American Dream. And uh, the lyrics are of a, about a man who is trying to work so hard for his family, but he never really gets to enjoy his family because he keeps thinking, if I just have a little bit more, if I just have a little bit more, if I have a little bit more, I'll finally be happy. I'll finally be able to give my family exactly what they wanted. And and the end of the song t- says, all they really wanted was you. And we see this deterioration as the song progresses. But I want to read a few of the lyrics because I think they, they mirror very well what we're reading in this middle section of Ecclesiastes 4. Uh, it says this, His American dream is beginning to seem more and more like a nightmare with every passing day. Daddy, can you come to my game? Oh, baby, please don't work late. Another wasted weekend, and they are slipping away. Because he works all day and lies awake at night, and he tells them things will get better. It'll just take a little more time. Because he works and he builds with his own two hands, and he pours all he has in a castle made with sand. But the wind and the rain are coming crashing in. Time will tell just how long his kingdom stands. Uh, Just a great song. A great message right there to remind us that toil and labor based upon the envy of one another, right? We look at what our neighbor has or we look at what happens on the uh, on, on the television that kind of talks about us, you know, and, and pits us saying, I, I, I want what my neighbor has, or I want what the person on TV has, and we work toward those things. We tell us, we tell ourselves, we want to provide those things for our kids or for our family, and we work so hard that sometimes we're working to the to an overextension of what we are required and what God wants us to do. Because what's more important than the work and what's more important than just the the bare necessity is the relationship we're supposed to have with one another and a relationship that's supposed to be ultimately dependent upon God. You know, is that is that where we're building our capital with our kids? And I think that Ecclesiastes 4, when it talks about toil and achievement, and it talks about not being content with our wealth, this is something that I think we need to really look at and ask ourselves that question. Has God provided for our needs? Do we have clothes on our back? Do we have food in our belly? Do we have a roof over our head? Can we be content with that? And then be content with our family, raising them in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Or have we lost sight of that? That is a really good question. Let us enjoy the things God has graciously given us. Our families, our our wives, our husbands, our children. the, The time that we have with them. The gracious provision that we have. Not neglecting those things by envying one another and working that toward that elusive best thing that we can give. Because in the end, just like the song says in in American Dream, and I really believe that Solomon's pointing out in this passage in Ecclesiastes 4, all they really wanted was you. Let's build in the right places. Let's make sure those relationships stay important and build the right things for God, building his kingdom first through our families and the outreach to the community that needs to know him uh, and be content with that. I pray that's an encouragement to you today and even a point of refocus if you're needing that. And God bless you and and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.